So it's been four months of using the titanium flexing Apple card, which anyone can get for free, and I haven't really posted too many updates about it in the past four months, and that's mostly because none of my opinions on it have really changed. I haven't had too many updates to it, but still worth revisiting because I do have some good and bad things to say about it. But just remember, when watching this, it is an Apple Sheep video, so I give them the benefit of the doubt more often probably than they deserve it. Let's begin. <laughs> So a few things have changed since the last time I talked about the Apple Card. For one, it is now my sole credit card. Before this, I also had a Wells Fargo free credit card. It was nothing fancy, but the reason I canceled it wasn't because I wasn't enjoying the rewards or anything, but honestly, I just didn't feel the need to have multiple credit cards. My credit score was doing fine as it was, so it did not damage it too much to close that account, and the rewards on the Apple Card have honestly been pretty decent. Now, let me be clear, when you sign up for any tier two credit card, one that does not cost anything to use. It's free to sign up, there's no annual membership. The rewards are never going to be that good, but it is mostly decided based on what is most convenient and easy for the user. And most credit cards people sign up for, they will do because they have some type of specific reward that they think they'll take advantage of quite often. And for me, that is through Apple. I pay for a lot of Apple memberships month to month. And of course, I buy lots of Apple products throughout the year. So getting 3% cash back or as of December 10th, all the way up till December 31st at the end of this year, you can actually get 6% cash back on hardware you purchase with the Apple Card, which I think is a pretty sweet deal given this doesn't cost anything to use. Pretty rare to find a free credit card that can give you 6% cash back anywhere. And I'm also a big fan of the daily cash system. No, it's not instant, so right when you buy something, you don't get the cash immediately, which I thought kind of sucked because that's sort of how they advertised it when they first unveiled the Apple Card, but you do usually have to wait a day or two for the transaction to officially clear, but I will say that it's much faster than any other credit card I've used, which my last one, you had to use it enough times until the rewards exceeded $25 that month, and then you could redeem it to your checking account, and that redemption process would take two days to transfer over. Banking apps, I don't know, in my opinion, they've just never worked that reliably, they've never felt very fluid, and Apple has made a very, very nice and well-designed wallet app that is far more easier to manage your finances, see how much you've spent on things. The user interface is very fluid. It feels very natural. And it's just another one of those circumstances where I'm like using my banking app and I'm like, man, I wish Apple designed this because I know it would be way more convenient and simple. So this is one of those situations where the rewards may not be insanely great for the Apple card, but that's the nice thing about a free credit card is basically any rewards you get out of it are rewards earned. I'm not that big a fan of credit cards that you have to pay annually or monthly to use and then you get better rewards in the process because then they get to kind of manipulate your spending habits a little bit more. The Apple Card has not influenced my spending habits at all. I've never intentionally gone out to buy something because, oh, I'll get 3% cash back at this location. Though I should mention, since the Apple Card originally launched, they've also added a bunch of things to the 3% cash back. Walgreens now supports it. Nike now supports it. T-Mobile, I think, is even supporting 3% cash back. Uber and Uber Eats, but I believe that was supported on day one. And I'm sure more companies will grow to support it in time. And of course, we also get new exclusive features for the Apple Card, like the 6% cash back for a limited time thing. And if Apple keeps doing that throughout the years, I might just wait around for it next time I make my Big Mac purchase. Not talking about the McDonald's Big Mac, but you know what I mean. They also launched a new feature recently that allows you to finance an iPhone, meaning you can pay for it unlocked full price with your Apple Card and then pay it off with installments using your Apple Card over 24 months with zero percent interest. So that's kind of cool. If you wanted to buy an unlocked phone and you didn't want to go through the iPhone upgrade program, you can just buy it unlocked and then pay for it monthly using the Apple Card, which actually has its own UI element now to pay the iPhone off over time. And given there's no interest on those payments, I think a lot of people might do that just simply out of convenience. It's not going to damage your credit score and you can pay for your iPhone as you need to. So instead of one giant $1,000 purchase, you can split it up into 24 installments and there won't be any extra charge for that, which is kind of cool, especially to those of you out there that would like to buy the latest iPhone, but maybe can't afford it right now. Be careful with that credit card. Don't get used to buying things you can't afford. So I'm not gonna be doing the installment plan, but it's just kind of interesting that they throw that in there and I'll have the option to next time I purchase an iPhone. So kind of cool. But I also thought it would be interesting to go into how much I've actually made off of rewards. Keep in mind, some of these things come from returns. So it's not like I necessarily got 
got all of this cash back, but I did get quite a large chunk. So in the month of November, I received just a little bit over $90 in total just from cash back. A lot of that though is probably the 16 inch MacBook Pro, so it's a little bit distorted. In the month of October, this is where I ordered things that I actually kept. My cash back total was actually $19, which again, just in pure rewards that I got very quickly. And in the month of September, when I bought a lot of iPhones, because you know, two iPhones, that's, that's a lot. Either way, I was spending a lot on Apple products that month and my total was $87 in cash back. Now, one feature I like is that you can directly pay off the Apple card balance using your Apple cash card. So instead of taking all of your money from your bank account to pay off the card, you can use the rewards you've collected to just pay off the balance if you want. Obviously, you can transfer them from the cash card to your bank if you want to, but typically I like to do that because it just minimizes the payments I have to send to the Apple card at the end of the day. And these may not seem like a lot. I'm sure some of you heavy credit card users are saying, you know, 20 to 30 bucks a month on rewards. That's not very much. But as someone who's not interested in signing up for an annual membership, I don't travel a lot. I don't need to take flights that often. I probably get on a plane once to twice a year. The Apple card is something that I just throw all my bills onto and I throw all of my monthly expenses on. It's not bad considering it costs me nothing to sign up for it. I now get 20 to 30 bucks a month just by spending what I normally spend. That easily covers the price of Disney Plus or covers the price of your Apple Music. So just in cash back, and guys, remember, I'm not spending anything extra just because I have this Apple card. I never use this thing because I can't afford something at a particular time. I just put simple things like groceries, gas, my monthly utilities for around the house, and just anything that doesn't necessarily need to be paid for with a debit card, I just throw on here and get either that 1%, 2%, or 3% cash back. A lot of locations where I live actually support Apple Pay, so I'm able to get 2% cash back fairly regularly. And like I said, most of my biggest purchases throughout the year are through Apple. So getting 3% cash back on those big purchases does end up paying off quite a bit compared to my last credit card, which basically gave me 1% cash back on everything. And that's pretty standard for a lot of credit cards. A lot of people sign up for credit cards simply because it's with their bank. They can build their credit history. They get a little bit of rewards and they don't have to have a separate app with a separate email and a separate password. That's got to be my favorite thing about the Apple card is it's just through my Apple ID. I don't need to download another app. It's very simple. It's very optimized. But I do have a couple of bad things to say about it. And it mostly comes to the physical nature of the Apple card. I don't know if you guys have noticed this yet, but the titanium has not held up perfectly. I get that this is not a big reason to be upset, but I've experienced a little bit of chipping on the sides. And the titanium look of the card was not exactly what I thought it was going to be. I definitely, when I first got this card, used to drop it on tables and desks a lot just to, you know, flex. And so you could hear that glorious sound that you're paying for something with titanium. And I quit doing that, obviously, because the novelty wore off. And most of the time I use the Apple card, it's usually digitally. So I don't really care that it scuffs up a little bit because I only see this thing for, you know, a couple of seconds every other day. Most of the time I'm paying for stuff with Apple Pay using my watch or my phone. And the few times I do use the physical card, I'm not just taking it out and staring at it. But a lot of people like the Apple card because of the physical aesthetic and the fact that it's kind of shown some chipping and some aging may annoy some of you people. I don't know, maybe you won't buy the Apple card for that reason, but just keep in mind, if I wanted to, I could request a brand new physical card free of charge. It would not cost me anything extra. They could just send me a brand new one in the mail and I would probably not toss that one around as much. I don't keep it in a leather wallet. I have a very simple, very small uh, Ridge wallet, which has seen better days and just because it's just a little piece of metal I don't really care that it's aged a little bit but yeah that's uh pretty much my only complaint with it I enjoy the apple card I like seeing that it's getting rewards that are improving over time I like that there's no point system it's just straight cash that's much easier for me to understand and I love that I can redeem it at any time I don't have to wait till I hit a certain balance so if I want to pay for something small I can just pay for it with the cash card or direct that cash card directly back into my apple card balance Works great for me, very happy with it. Of all the services Apple launched this year, Apple Card has to be my favorite because it actually makes me money, 20 to 30 bucks a month on average. And I don't lose any money on the card because I never miss a payment. How are you guys enjoying the Apple Card? Do you like it? Are the things you would like changed? We'll explore more into the potential of Apple Cards in a later video, but all that good stuff, let me know what you're thinking by hitting me up over on Twitter or joining our Discord. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I be flexing that titanium. See you in the next one. Boy, that sounds terrible.